Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite sized pieces. Today we had a lot of things to go over, so let's jump right in. First up, former EU Parliament member Godfrey Bloom, who calls banking system a scam, bought his first Bitcoin. And this is the internet's favorite example of someone who can rail against the central banks and why this is so important. He's actually into Bitcoin now, also. On the heels of the XRP Spark airdrop, there's a new scam coming about. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is and how to avoid it so you don't fall victim. Speaking of XRP, two fraud allegations have been dropped against Ripple and their CEO, Brad Garlinghouse. However, the XRP lawsuit does move forward and there's some interesting wrinkles here. And we're gonna get into Brad Garlinghouse and his holdings as far as XRP, how much he sold and how much he has. Also, Sushi Swap starts to tank and bleed out as it drops below a dollar. And I have to tell you, good riddance. And we're gonna talk about this as far as what a project should absolutely not and never do, and what a project like Uniswap and how it redeems the whole area. Final two pieces, I wanna take a look at this new project called Polka Starter. There's some pretty good stuff about it, but there's also some things that make me very leery. So we'll get into all that, but let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is October 4th, about 2 p.m. It is Sunday. Fantastically beautiful day here in the fantastic city of El Paso, Texas. But what do we got here? Wow, Bitcoin is up 1%, 10.6. You cannot beat that. First of all, it's a Sunday. Things usually start to kind of take a dip. And also with everything that happened to BitMEX, with the US president, and you know, just the global economy in general. I mean, hey, pretty great day if it's up 1%. Ethereum up 1% and it's uh, above 350. Super happy. Tether, which is uh, tethered to the US dollar is at a dollar. <laughs> XRP, which I think is tethered to the quarter, is around 25 cents. Binance coin, 3.4% up. I can, I do like that. I'm not a big holder, but whoever is a holder out there for Binance, congratulations. Uh, good job holding that coin. Bitcoin Cash, 0.9. Let's see, what else is really up? 3.5 for Cardano. Eh, not too bad. 3.7 for Monero. Again, Monero making a nice little little uh, pump. Uh, hopefully, I can actually hit in that top 10. We'll see what happens. 0 0.8 with 3.6. 1.2. 1 Nothing really great. Uniswap, ah, down 6%, almost 7 down to 374 I was hoping it would hold that $4 range, but just couldn't do it. But I see big things in the horizon. I... I see decentralized exchanges becoming more and more of a better thing and actually just better for all of us. So um, besides all the different scam coins that are out there, hopefully they can you know, deal with that. But I think that they are the future, especially with what's going on with these centralized exchanges. And uh, just take a look at BitMEX. Everything else is good, but wow, look at Celsius Network, 54% up, unbelievable for the week, 15%. And I was just talking about this a couple of days ago. It, it just uh, crossed the dollar barrier. Now we're at $1.40, so is two bucks in the horizon? I don't know, but uh, I have to tell you, uh, Celsius is one of my main, my main things, uh, they are my one, two, three punch as far as what I do with my cryptocurrency. I have 30% of my entire portfolio in the Celsius wallet. And uh, I believe in what they're doing. Like Alex Wyshynski, looks like a pretty good thing. I like them. Um, I buy most of my things with Voyager or with Kraken. And those are my one, two, three punches from now on. If you want to sign up for Celsius, uh, just in the description of every one of my videos, there's a link to the Google spreadsheet, uh, exchange and wallet fees. And I just go through everything that I use and recommend or do not recommend. And if you sign up with Celsius, uh, you know, it's $20. So you can go right to Celsius and sign up, or you can use the affiliate links for all these different ones that I have and uh, get paid a little bit. But uh, that's up to you, do whatever you want. So all right, let's break into today's top stories. So first up, I've seen this guy countless times on the internet and I have no idea who he is. And now it all makes sense. So this is former parliament member Godfrey Bloom. That's a good name, Godfrey Bloom, who called banking system just an outright scam. And you gotta love this guy. So first of all, who is this guy? He's a, he's a politician, member of the EU for Yorkshire and the Humber from 2004 to 2014. No idea what that is. I'm in America. It's all foreign to me. Uh, he was elected for the UK Independence Party, later served as Independent Bloom, has also published six books on military history and the Austrian School of Economics. So a uh, pretty bright guy and really gets to know things and probably one of the brightest ones that we can have as far as uh, talking about that the central banks are out and right scams because, hey, wrote a couple books on it. Anyhow, yeah, the former MEP is well known for his unconventional views, calling the state an institution of theft and saying the debt crisis was created by politicians and central bankers. And if you're on my channel, uh, you know I wholeheartedly agree with that. Those people 
All of them that are involved are all guilty of this. All of them. So when we see someone like this, just kind of, you know, call a spade a spade. I love people like that. He even said the whole banking system is a scam, as is global warming. So just to get you a little insight about this guy, just how, you know, how ballsy he is. I mean, get away with I mean, this guy, he's great for the whole industry. He's He's great as far as honesty. And uh, I, when I first saw this video, I saw this like, like a couple years ago, it was fantastic. So I'm just gonna play this for you so you know exactly what the heck I'm talking about. For the EFT, Mr. Bloom has two minutes. Uh, well, uh, Commissioner, um, Mr. President, uh, I rise again, I'm afraid to make the same old hoary speech that I've been making here for several years. And that is, it is my opinion that you do not really understand the concept of banking. All the banks are broke. Uh, Bank Santander, Deutsche Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, they're all broke. And why are they broke? It isn't an act of God. It isn't some sort of tsunami. They're broke because we have a system called fractional reserve banking, which means that banks can lend money that they don't actually have. It's a criminal scandal, and it's been going on for too long. To add to that problem... You have moral hazard, a very significant moral hazard from the political sphere. And most of the problem starts in politics and central banks, which are part of the same political system. We have counterfeiting, sometimes called quantitative easing, but counterfeiting by any other name. The artificial printing of money, which if any ordinary person did, they'd go to prison for a very long time. And yet governments and central banks do it all the time. Central banks repress the amount of interest that rate, rates are, so we don't have the real cost of money. And yet we blame the real retail banks for manipulating LIBOR. The sheer effrontery of this is quite astonishing. It's central banks. It's central banks that manipulate interest rates, Commissioner. And plus, underneath all this, we talk loosely, in a rather cavalier fashion, do we not, about deposit guarantees. So when banks go broke through their own incompetence and chicanery, the taxpayer picks up the tab. It's theft from the taxpayer. And until we start sending bankers, and I include central bankers and politicians, to prison for this outrage, it will continue. Well, that's a steaming bowl of truth right there, if I've ever heard any. So uh, this is the guy. And I can tell you, you got to love him. Okay, wait, well, before we move on, I just got to say that we did a video yesterday about Michael Saylor, who, was the C who is the CEO of MicroStrategy, who had put put in almost, uh, almost half a billion dollars worth of uh, fiat into Bitcoin and what he thinks about it. And we had known about this story, you know, two or three weeks ago, but there was another interview that he did with Stansbury Research where he pretty much just lays it out uh, why Bitcoin is far, far superior to gold and everything else. Now, I am a believer in gold. I have invested into it. I think the new saving strategy should be gold, silver, Bitcoin. And uh, when we have people that, just start to get it like sailor here like bloom like all these different people like the paul tudor jones you start to feel like things are shifting that things are changing and this is i gotta tell you i mean the most exciting time to be in this space because people are just starting to wake up and going wait the world's on fire the interest rates are going down to zero or maybe even negative the inflation rate is going up way too fast and this quantitative easing someone's gonna have to pay for this so what do we do well we have choices and we can stay into money and fiat and things like that or we can hedge our bet and look at some other types of assets like well i don't know bitcoin so i feel the shift i see it coming let me know what you think but let's move on so what was interesting to me about this guy is that Bloom hadn't invested into Bitcoin yet. He had just gone into gold and silver. But this all changed on Thursday when he said he, that he bought his first in, uh, Bitcoin. He says, I made my first purchase of Bitcoin this week. Gold and sir, silver, I have plenty. I'm sure he does. Probably a pretty well-off guy. And then he further on, he elaborates, I'm not anti-Bitcoin, just an old geezer, more comfortable with gold. He responded to a tweet urging him to get into Bitcoin in May. And this is what this is the thing. Just because when you talk to people and they say, you know what, I don't really get Bitcoin. I don't really understand it. Or I don't, you know, really, I, I, I can't get behind it because it has no fill in the blank. It has no utility. It's going to go away. It's, you can have all these forks, you have all these problems and, and gold and silver and, and fiat is a, is a safer opportunity. You just have to keep telling them exactly why. Because what I feel like for this channel does, it's kind of like 
educating people as much as I can get my hands on and pull them into this life raft before everything goes under. That's kind of how I feel. So I, I think it's the same thing here with Bloom. Very smart guy, wrote a couple books on the economy. So, I mean, he finally gets it after all this time. And it's been, I mean, that video I showed you was 2013. So, I mean, you have to really put in the time to kind of change people's thoughts. That's just how it is. And then he states that he's been buying gold since the 90s when it was 250 per ounce. Now it's almost, it's 1550. I think it was the high, it was like a 2000. And then lastly, he states, uh, he indicated in response to another tweet that he will not ignore Ethereum and decentralized finance in his research. So again, this is a guy who just started off with Bitcoin, which I always call it the, uh, the gateway crypto. And then he's going to fall down that rabbit hole. And who knows, maybe he can be on this channel and talk about his, his, uh, his experiences. Let me just think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up. Don't fall for this scam. This is going to be simple, easy. So what's happening here? As you all may know, for all you XRP holders, including myself, there's going to be an airdrop and it's going to be from Flare where they're going to give you Spark tokens. So it's kind of like a one-to-one -one airdrop. All the XRP, you get Flare or Spark. What's Spark? Well, it's going to introduce the smart contract functionality uh, to the XRP uh, ledger. And then on top of that, uh, Ripple's making moves because they've actually got a patent for Oracle. So should be a good year for Ripple and or XRP. We'll find out. Anyhow, the airdrop's going to happen on December 12th. And here's the problem. So we've done a couple of videos on how to take your XRP and actually have it set up so you'll get the airdrops. I did a video uh, right here. Uh, you can find it. I'll probably link in the very end of this, of this video. Also over on uh, Dan or Digital Asset News Clips where I just kind of break all these these long videos down that I do into clips. This is the video. It's uh, seven minutes long and it explains exactly how to set everything up. So you have your Ethereum wallet and you, you sign the transaction. Everything's good. So you can check that out. Or if you want to make things easier, uh, just deposit your XRP into Celsius because they're going to support the airdrop. Uh, whatever you want to do. So the video that I did was based on White's Wind. And White's Wind, he's a board member of the newly created XRP Ledger Foundation. And he wrote this little blog post which explains exactly how to do things. So I took that blog post, did a video, and I showed you exactly how I did it on my nano ledger and it's pretty simple uh not too not too difficult but again uh celsius makes it like you know brain dead easy you just put your xrp on there so while explaining the peculiarities of the sham white's win claims that fraudsters are already creating the copycat of his legitimate website on the other domain that asks global users to send XRP during the process of claiming Spark token. So what's gonna happen is people are going to spoof that, that website or that web address. They're gonna try to get people to deposit it into their, their wallet and it's just kind of a real pain in the A. So again, you can make it hard or make it simple. But just know this, it's important to note that the real tool will never ask you to deposit any tokens in advance. You're not depositing any tokens, you're just stating where they actually are in which wallet. And that is the big thing, that's all you gotta do. Also, there's gonna be a fake Telegram channel, Chan Knowles. I, I mean, it says channel here, but I guarantee there's multiple right now because everybody wants your cryptocurrency. Treat everything like a scam until proven otherwise, and usually you should be okay. So anyhow, just avoid the scams. And speaking of scams, I got a, an email from a subscriber, this is from Kevin, and last name to protect the innocent. And uh, what he tells me is that he has, he's been investing in Bitcoin, and in one of my comments, in one of my videos, he says he, he got a sales pitch from a third party who recommends an investor. It's the same trash you've seen constantly. And I try to, I read all the reviews are all the different things that people say. And I go through there and every single day in the morning, cause I wake up around 3.30, I know I'm not a big sleeper. And I wake cause I got so much to do. So like, well, I'll go through those and I'll wipe out all those, those different things that YouTube doesn't catch, which is weird because like, I'll have like 2000 comments and they're like 2000 scam comments. And then and the rest, the other thousand are actually, actually legitimate, but I'll still have to go through there and manually click on them and report them as scam or delete them or whatever else. And then of course, later on, uh, the, the scammers will come back and put them right back in. So it's like a never ending battle. So just know that anybody who says like, oh, I got you know this great one from, from Hacker Steve or, or Hacker John or whatever, he's the, he's the best, whatever. they're not the best, they're the worst. And they're, they're just bots and they are just trying to separate you from your money. Don't fall for that like Kevin did. And this is just a cautionary tale. And I know some people are saying, well, how could it ever happen? I don't believe that happened. Well, guess what? Not everybody's as savvy as you are, all right? So uh, I, I can't say any more clear. Some people just are trusting. I mean, 
that's that's what it is so uh, it's all about forex and stocks he says it went on for a month they re requested more bitcoin and again fast trade 24 hours i would invest and my investment would grow and blah 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 so just know this treat everything like a scam until proven otherwise because it all is 99 percent of everything out there is a scam there's only one percent that's good that's just how I feel. Not a very trusting person. And uh, it's served me pretty well. Will you miss some opportunities? Sure. But guess what? You won't be like Kevin losing everything. So that's just a little uh, PSA. All right, let's move on. Next up, fraud allegations against Ripple dropped. And that's not the big story. The big story is what's going to happen with Discovery. And I'll get that in a second. It says here in a, in a court record dated October 2nd, which was Friday, signed by Judge Hamilton. The court decided to dismiss the charges against San Francisco startup for violations of sections, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so what they're saying is that the plaintiff here argued that Garlinghouse, Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, made statements that conflated, <laughs> inflated the adoption of enterprise solutions with the adoption of XRP, even if Ripple's enterprise clients were not adopting the fourth largest group. So what, what it comes down to is that they're saying that because Brad was always saying, hey, Ripple's doing great, Ripple's doing great, XRP's doing great, XRP's doing great. They're saying that he misrepresented what was happening with Ripple, the company, as far as what's happening with XRP, the token, the cryptocurrency. And that has been some, some confusion out there. I mean, even exchanges get it wrong. They, they list XRP as Ripple. I, I still see it. It's crazy. So they're saying that is fraud. And of course, uh, the court granted the motion to drop the charge, saying the plaintiff's claim is unfounded. There was a separate claim that Garlinghouse made statements that falsely associated the adoption of enterprise solutions with the adoption of XRP, which is what I was just saying. Because Ripple is doing so good, XRP is not doing so good. They are separate. Ripple is a technology company. XRP is a cryptocurrency. And a lot, a lot of the different banks and their associations have adopted Ripple. They say, you know what? This is a pretty great uh, company and technology and for, as far as like a messaging service for cross-border payments. However, we don't really... We don't really get an XRP. Sorry. There are far more banks and institutions using Ripple than there are XRP. Now, is that going to change in the future? Maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. I sure hope it does. I'm still holding the exact same amount of XRP. I haven't added to that uh, stash and I have lost over 90% of my position, but I'm just too darn stubborn to let it go. So I will say this though. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And a lot of deals get done in back rooms with a just a simple handshake. And what, what Ripple is doing is they are one of the very few that are actually going out and lobbying Congress, talking to the regulators, and really being the adults. And will that pay off? Well, it's better than not doing anything. So they could be the ones that could be the big winners. And again, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And Ripple does know a lot of people. Let's just be honest. Moving down. So one part has been dismissed. However, the court gives the plaintiff the green light to proceed with the cause of action involving the violation of blah, 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 which is all about fraud and selling unregistered securities. Okay, so why is that such a big thing? And remember, this is against Brad Garlinghouse, against Garlinghouse. And this is where they kind of get this from. Because Brad State, I'm long XRP. I'm very, very long XRP as a percentage of my personal balance sheet. I'm not long on some of the other digital assets. And he has come out many a time and said that he owns Bitcoin and he believes in Bitcoin. And that's not to be disputed, but he's probably talking about other digital assets, maybe like tomato coin. I don't know. Because it's not clear to me what's the real utility, what problem are they really solving. He's always been open about that. He thinks that there's a lot of different digital assets that solve absolutely nothing and they're just there to make money. If you're solving a real problem, if it's a scale problem, then I think you have a huge opportunity to continue to grow that. We have been really fortunate. Obviously, I remain very, very, very long XRP. There's an expression in the industry, HODL. Instead of hold, it's HODL. I'm on the HODL side. So this is going to come into play because Judge Hamilton said the plaintiff may move forward with the cause of action solely based on Garlinghouse's alleged misrepresentation regarding the scope and character of his XRP holdings. The court also noted that the plaintiff may pursue other cause of action against Ripple Labs. So it's gonna be very interesting. There's gonna be a discovery process. They're going to take a lot of depositions. It's gonna be very expensive, I can tell you that. So I don't know where this guy's getting his money, but I know <laughs> I know he's going up against a huge corporation. Not that you can't be at a corporation. I've been sued by a corporation before. It sucked and uh, drained me tremendously. <laughs> it took me two years, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. 
So the real question is going to come down to is how much is Brad Garlinghouse holding? How much has he sold? What is going on with his holdings right now? And I mean, it's all up for debate. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just not. And uh, I mean, I could just reach this off the top of my head. I could think to myself, well, even if you, you know, had, I don't know, 10,000 XRP, 100,000 XRP, if you just say, hey, I'm long XRP, I mean, that could be enough. But again, not a lawyer, don't know what's going to happen, but I do believe that uh, it's going to all come out in the court proceedings, and uh, we'll see. Let me think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, and I'll make this quick, sushi swap tanks below a dollar as protocols liquidity continues to bleed. Good riddance. So the food-inspired DeFi token is currently down almost 94%. From its all-time high of 1590, Jesus, 1597. That was reached on September 1st. It's pretty low. So if you don't know, let me give you a little history lesson. This is always interesting. And the reason I'm talking about this is not because I want to bag on this on this project. A lot of people lost a lot of money, and that sucks. I don't, I don't want to see anybody lose money. Let me be very, very clear on that. But I wanted to cover the story as a reminder for anybody who is listening, who is thinking about starting the same type of thing, this is not the way to do it. This is the exact opposite way to do things and to screw people out and then also to cause the whole industry really to have a black eye. We're going to recover. I think we'll be okay. These are just growing pains, but this is what's not to do. And when we get into Uniswap, I'll tell you what exactly you should do. So as reported by you today, token then tanked over 75% on September 5th after the master chef swapped his sushi, all his sushi, for Ethereum and distanced himself from the project. Sushi had a relief rally the following day when FTX CEO uh, SBF, Sam Bankman Free Fried, was handed over the protocol. Next week, Sushi Swap wanted to become the largest DEX with $1.4 billion worth of total value locked because of its successful vampire mining attack in Uniswap, just essentially uh, sucking all the different... Um, liquidity out of uniswap not all of it but a good a good portion still the token was crashing chef nomi's uh repentance caused a 50 percent rally on september 11th but it wasn't sustainable and now here we are so it's one of those things in business and it's one of those things in trust i've always said this in the same thing trust is a currency you cannot buy and it takes or can take decades to actually build up a reputation but it only takes only seconds to make it crumble so you have to protect these things and i've seen businesses crumble because they make a catastrophic mistake and it's all based on trust and they do something to their users to their employees to the people that they serve and it screws them out of something and you just can't recover from that no matter what you do it's just very hard to come back and this is exactly what happened with sushi so that's how it goes. So if you're going to start up some type of project, just know this is the exact opposite thing you want to do. Now, Uniswap later recaptured all attention with the surprise airdrop of its Uni token on September 17th. And that was fantastic. That's how you do things, right? You don't give it all to these whales. You don't give it all to your investors. You say, hey, we're going to reward the community that got us here. We're going to stick with the person that brought us to the dance. Here you go. Here's your foreign Uniswap tokens. And you know what? If it was any other type of way, I would have sold those things so quick. I'd have been like, great. Thanks for it, suckers. I'm out of here. But to date, I have not sold them. And I probably won't sell them just because of the way they handle themselves. So um, I think Uniswap could do great things. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, I want to talk about Pokestarter. I was watching uh, Satoshi Stacker. He's a YouTuber, got a pretty good channel. And uh, he was talking about it and I was always, I'm always sucked into uh, great conversations. And I thought, what the heck is that? I like Polkadot. I got Polkadot. So what's Pokestarter? Well, Pokestarter, uh, the people who brought that to us, they believe that projects like Uniswap and Compound have issues, especially in terms of scalability. And talk about Ethereum network with their fees, the slow performance, and um, people get frustrated. So yeah, there is definitely an issue there. I can tell you that from experience. So what do we want? Well, users want cheap transactions, ultra-fast swaps, user-friendly design, that's for sure. And the possibility to buy and move assets between blockchains. That's what we want. Sure. So what are they going to do? They're going to bring to us Pokestar, permissionless decks built for cross-chain token pools and auctions, enabling projects to raise capital on a decentralized and interoperable environment based on Polkadot. So you're going to be able to have decentralized projects. We'll be able to raise and exchange capital cheap and fast. Users will be able to participate in a secure and compliant environment and use assets that go beyond ERC-20 standard. Great. So this is going to be a DEX, a decentralized exchange. Here's the use cases. Fundraising. Startups can raise funds on a secure platform. Auctions. Token pools will include bid auctions. And OTC, closed OTC deals, 
with password protection. So this is interesting because it's a decentralized exchange that talks about having full KYC uh, integration, a governance model like other DEXs do. Permissionless listing. So that's interesting because you know the permission listing. With permissionless listing, you can have the real tokens and also scam tokens. This is the same thing that happens over Uniswap. But you can do cross-chain swaps, which is interesting. Interesting. Fix and dynamic swap, anti-scam features. Well, let's see how that works out with the permissions listing. I'd like to see, I'd love to see that actually. And here's how it ranks up. So you got Pokestarter, Uniswap, Prima Block. I don't know that one. Bounce, I don't definitely know that one. So you got cross-chain pools, supports any asset, governance model, fixed pools, whitelisted pools. Great. And they got all that and Uniswap doesn't have it. Of course, that's what you're going to say. Sure. So, I mean, look pretty promising. Here's the roadmap. Something's going to happen in Q4. And permissionless listing, fixed token swap, private pools, anti-scam features, ISO. So all this stuff's going to happen in Q4, which is October, November, December, right now. Q1, they're going mig to migrate to the Polkadot multi-chain swaps. Q2, they're going to, it looks like they're going to give out governance tokens, and then they have a DAO, Q3, Q4, 21. So everything's going to happen moving forward. So that's great. And it goes through some other things. So I'm interested in it. It looks pretty cool, but there's some problems I see, and this is what I got. So if you scroll all the way down, you can, you can look at their team, right? So here's the founders. I don't know. It just says, this is our founders. I'm hoping there's more to this team, but this is what they got. They got two guys, Daniel Stockhouse and Tiago Martins. Well, who the heck are these guys? Well, Dan, well Daniel here, I had to take a little, little search because it just says serial tech entrepreneur, scaled companies over a million users and 20 million on October, successful exit. And Tiago, passionate, product builder and senior software engineer with successful exit. Great, fantastic. What have you done? Sorry, but that's what I got to ask. So looked up LinkedIn. Here's Daniel Stockhouse, and here's what he's done. So I look up here, co-founder, June 2020. I mean, this is right. They're just making this thing, right? And been five months. Here's where he's at. He was also the co-founder of Olifant, LIGO, and Fitch. So Olifant, they're a digital agency, passionate about the things we do to help our clients grow. And they do like e-commerce websites, content marketing campaign. They pretty much just, just build out funnels for websites, right? They also do, I mean, or, or they build websites. Great. So he did that for, looks like 19 years. Wow. He was part of Lego. It's an e again, an e-commerce site, 5.5 million annual visitors, up to 20 million annual turnover. So, okay, this guy's can, you know, we can build a company. Great. On to the scale of what we're going to see. Who knows? And then we've got Tiago Martins. Remember, this is the CTO. So he started being the CTO as of September 2020, last month, lead developer in CoFlit, uh, Bet Protocol, Coin Vision. Because I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, well, CoFlit, what's that? It's a leading general aviation aircraft management platform. All right. Product advisor for Bet Protocol, new online gaming standard, fairness and fairness and transparency. All right. Coin Vision, this is probably the most related to cryptocurrency digital assets, building the leading crypto research and education company. So let's take a look at that. And then he was also an instructor for Ruby and Python. So I mean, definitely knows about coding. Great. So we take a look at this, CoinVision, designed to help new investors understand the cryptocurrency market. We'll take a, we'll visit the website and that's never good. So look, I'm just an investor. I'm not a trader. I don't like to trade. I need to minimize risks. And uh, I'd like to do more sure things. I mean, there's nothing really sure in any investment. That's just the way it is. But you try to look at the most positive things that you can. And for this one, it sounds good, but I'm gonna pass on it right now. I don't know what else to tell you on this one. Uh, take a look at Satoshi Stacker. He did a really good, vi good video, but for me personally, I just got a pass. I mean, not to say that I won't change my mind. I looked at uh, Polkadot and I had a, originally passed on that one and I did a little deeper dive and I said, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'll probably get into that. And I did, I, I, I keep buying uh, Polkadot, but mainly because of Gavin Wood, who was one of the co-founders of Ethereum. And that's a smart guy. That's a guy I can believe in. He's already done it once. Why couldn't he do it again? On the other, on the flip side, again, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I just, don't know about this one. So that's it for today. So thanks a lot for sticking with me to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, I mean, two months going to pop up on your left and right. And I'll try to link to the videos that we just talked about. And that's it for today. So have a great rest of your Sunday and I'll see you on the next one.